The following program contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. Images depicted in this video are for instructional purposes only and are not intended to depict actual gang members. Any person depicted in this video may not be a gang member. One of three things that will happen if you get involved with a gang. Death, prison, or a medical condition for life. Street gangs are the same thing as terrorists, except they're not coming from outside of our borders. I would never have in my wildest dream thought that I would have a child involved in gangs. It happened. Regular people think that the, the gangs are just an inner city thing. They're mistaken. They do go to movie theaters. They do go to ice skating rinks. The gang members will infiltrate suburban areas. We're talking about money. We're talking about guns. We're talking about drugs. New Jersey is part of a megalopolis, which lends to, unfortunately, lends to gang activity. Uh, of the 235 different gangs that we've identified, there are seven gangs that we have further uh, classified because of violent activities that have occurred inside of our prisons. And those gangs are the Latin Kings, the Association Nieta, the 5% Nation of Gods and Earths, the uh, East Coast Aryan Brotherhood, the Prison Brotherhood of Bikers, the Bloods, and the Crips. Now, some of those gangs are also very prevalent on the streets of New Jersey. Most gang members are going to schools, they're going to parks, they're going anywhere where they can find kids to do their dirty work, and then what they do is they initiate them make them feel like they're a part of something and then once you become a part of that gang now you're obligated to do whatever he wants you to do they don't come across as the big toughians they recruit you as we'll protect you we'll take care of you we'll provide for you we'll show you love gangs don't call themselves gangs they call themselves family my father wasn't there so that was one of the big factors we lived of welfare so that was another factor because I couldn't have some of the things that the other kids have. I didn't have a male figure in there that would teach me about things like this. So I went and looked in the gang, in the leader of the gangs, because they was giving me that male figure and that male love. I was out there drugging, I was out there sticking up people, shooting people for no reason. Uh, someone robbed my mother, so I went, I got a gun, I, I followed him. And you know, when I thought it was, the time was right, I shot him twice in the face. So basically I was facing at least 15 to 30 years. I have something kind of special here for, for you guys and girls this morning. And uh, brought someone with me. He's an inmate. He's in prison. My name is Jamel, I'm 24 years of age and I'm currently serving a seven with a three year stint for armed robbery, which means I could do no less than three years before I'm eligible for parole. One of the ways you could become a gang member is pretty much whatever they tell you to do is what you have to do. I ain't think about consequences. I wasn't worried because I was always thinking no matter what, they was going to be there for me. And that wasn't the case. Many of the kids coming in today, the large majority of the kids coming in today, come from single parent families. And they are not provided what they need and want. Care, attention, and love. So they turn to gangs. I've been a police officer going on 37 years. I've seen neighborhoods and communities, actual neighborhoods eroded because of drugs. And now you have this organization of drug dealers because that's what these gangs are. That's their predominant structure. They deal drugs. They have money and with money they buy guns. 
These are guns that are being used by gang members, drug dealers that are out there on the corners of, of the streets here in Patterson. I use this to demonstrate the type of weapons that these gangs are using. It'll take 12 rounds of shotgun shell, which is either double O buck, or in some cases uh, they use uh, deer slugs. This will clean off any corner. Here's your AK, 30 round magazine, very devastating caliber. This is what they use in Vietnam and what they use in uh, third world countries. They're all over the world. We've had uh, kids as young as eight and nine actually recruited to these gangs. And the reason they use them is for lookouts and to carry drugs and to also carry guns. More and more we're seeing guns as the instrument of trauma uh, for people fighting other people. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that gangs are becoming more prominent. Our clinic treats individuals between 12 and 25 years of age, and the peak age at which young people come in for injuries related to the gangs is around 17, 16, 17 years of age. Over my career, I'd say at least 15 or 20 young people I've cared for have died because of gang uh, injuries, have been, in other words, murdered. Actually, the grant will come through the juvenile. Uh, the leading cause of death in African Americans between the age of 10 and 24 is homicide. And almost 85% of those deaths are related to firearm related uh, incidences. To become a gang member in some, in some organizations, you either, if you're a woman, you have to be sexed in. Um, for males, it's usually being beaten. And it usually takes a lot to affect a seasoned emergency medicine physician. But we had a tragic incident where a 14 year old was being sexed in. And while she was being sexed in, had gone through maybe six or seven members of this subset of a gang and decided that she no longer wanted to be involved with this gang. She was threatened with her life. Uh, she continued to resist, uh, wanted to speak to the authorities. And actually how it ended was that they ended up shooting her with a nine millimeter gun in her vagina. My son's not afraid of anything. He, he still has this image that it can't happen to him. His friends are dying all around him. Family members are getting killed, mangled, wheelchair bound, but he just thinks that it can't happen to him. That's the only thing I'm afraid of for him, is death. I worry about him. There's nights that I hope and pray that I don't get that phone call that tells me that he's not alive. Um, there's times that I wonder how safe is he? How long is he gonna be safe? And I just pray that he comes back. The day that he, he died, uh, when I went to identify the body, I kept saying it, it wasn't him, but it was Chris. You know, they showed us the picture. They didn't let us see the body. They just showed the picture and he had a gash from ear to ear. They had cut his throat. And you could look at his face and see that um, they had beat him. Supposedly, it was because a year beforehand, Chris was out with someone who was called Baby OG. And the young man got in trouble or whatever, and Chris didn't come to his assistance. I guess he wanted Chris to fight for him. He had a laugh that is very contagious, and believe it or not, his younger brother, if you close your eyes, sound just like him. I've never told him that. He really was a good guy. And I think I, I miss that most about him, just his laughter. Parents should be aware 
and changes in uh, attitude towards authority, which is really part of the process of growing up. But when you see radical changes, when you see changes in dress, everything had to be red, uh, red hat, red and white sneakers, red and white pants, a white shirt with the bandana with red and white bandana on it. Then it changed from a red and white to a black and white. And that's where the clothes started changing. It went from wearing a belt to having his pants hanging off. When you see uh, changes in friends, the type of friends, the, the fact that maybe your, your son or daughter doesn't want to bring uh, their friends home, doesn't want you to meet their friends, then you're going to have to start questioning who are these people. Uh, one of the things I tell parents all the time is get to know your, your children's friends' parents. A lot of times you go around and a car might drive by and do some kind of hand sign. Sometimes they go around, if it's a blood area and they crips, they might throw the uh, crip killer sign, which means they kill crips, or, they, or vice versa, if they're driving through a blood area, you know, the crips would throw a BK sign. They might throw a BK, which means blood killer, or they might throw a CK, crip killer. Now the other things you can look for are what's called the gang indicia, which are signs on the body of a gang of gang membership. And gangs frequently either tattoo or brand their members. And DC spells uh, stands for Nieta de Corazón, which means from the heart, which is uh, a saying we say in Puerto Rico. When we say that we Nieta, we say that we Nieta is from the heart. One of the most unique things that I ask when I'm doing trainings is. How many of you listen to rap music? And people do not raise their hands and they just look at you like, rap music. I'm saying that's part of the problem. Because if you're not listening to what the kids are listening to, how are you to understand what they're thinking? What causes their violence? Who's telling them that they have to have a gun? Who's telling them that sex is okay? Who's telling them that drugs don't kill? You need to listen to this and discuss it. And when you discuss it with these young people, you get their opinion and you get to share your opinion. Anytime you have graffiti up, we consider it newspaper on the street, that the street people understand what's going on, the gang members know what's going on, they know who's who and uh, what's what. What we have here is a double tattoo or a double graffiti mailbox here. As you can see, you have the ATC 13. That's a little possible. We have a Mexican individuals here, possibly affiliated with MS-13. And then you would have the outlaw, LAW. O-U-T-L-L-A-W, that would be considered with the Bloods. What it's showing me here is I have some type of blood activity and I also have my Mexican groups here also. I guess the Bloods want the Mexican group to know that they're in the area as well. So if it comes down to a drug trade or a drug uh, situation, they're going to know who is involved in uh, all the players. Right now we're under a gazebo in a, in a park in suburbs of Trenton. Um, some of the gang tattoos that we recognize here as being affiliated with Bloods, Crips, Nietas, or I'm gonna go around and show you what they're looking like. You got right here, you got your Crip rules, BK, stands for blood killer. More times than not, when you're dealing with a Crip, he will slash the B out to disrespect the Bloods. You come around over here, you'll see the term LOC, L-O-C. LOC stands for love of Crip, or a lot of Crip, which is also a Crip term. So it kind of justifies that yes, there are, um, his credibility that there are Crips here. There are certain towns in the state of New Jersey that don't want to believe that there's any kind of at least a presence of gang activity, whether it be one member, two members, graffiti. I mean, it had to come from someplace. All our operations will be done on uh, Talk 4. Anything to deal with motor vehicles will be done on IPD1. Any uh, chases will go through IPD1. Any... The Essex Anti-Crime Task Force is comprised of uh, representatives from uh, state, local, and county uh, agencies tasked here in Irvington to address the quality of life issues and the uh, rampant crime that's, uh, that's occurring here and the large gang problem that they have. Big up, Paru City, CK all day. You can see kids starting at the age of 10, 11, 12, seems like every kid in Nervington is somehow joining or hanging out with gang members. 
it's not all of them, but, you know, a lot of the kids, you know, the parents got to look and see what their kids are doing and who they're getting involved with. From August 2003 to August 2004, we've affected over 1,200 arrests. Um, the large majority of those have been gang-related uh, arrests, narcotics arrests and weapons arrests. I think New Jersey's taken uh, a very proactive approach to uh, gang reduction. One of my concerns majorly as a mother of three is a lot of the gang related that's happening or that can come into Perth Amboy. Well, Perth Amboy has been a aggressive working in prevention of gangs in the city of Perth Amboy. Uh, we have eight officers that are the great training, that's gang resistance education and training, who go to the schools, the seventh grade, and, and teach that. Also down here in the safe haven, there are times during the school year that issues are brought up, uh, some fights that occur in the schools between groups of kids. Uh, they bring all the kids down in this safe haven and discuss those issues with them and try to give them alternatives on how to deal with those peer pressures and those uh, different uh, issues with gangs. Keep it going. Keep the ball going, guys. Come on. The Safe Haven is a part of the Police Community Partnership Program. Um, this is where the kids actually come in Monday through Friday um, during the school year where they're assisted by teachers um, to do homework and reading. From 5 to 8 o'clock, we open up the, you know, the building and, and the tennis courts out here for recreational purposes. We have police officers that are assigned to this area, seven police officers and they mingle with the children and the community because that's what this is all about, the community and, and the police officers. With the, everybody's parents working every day, this place is a haven for them and safe haven it is. They come here, they stay off the streets, they interact with other kids. These kids are staying away from the allure that is of the gang element. How was your day? Good, how's I was yours? wondering where my children are, making sure that they're in a safe environment has been very important to me. They're in an environment where the community police are right there. How can you ask for more safety? Their minds are being stimulated here. They're being stimulated not only through education, but through recreation. They see their future here. And with that, they know that gangs are not the place for them. This is not a problem that is just a flash in the pan. This is a problem that has accumulated, uh, has, has manifested itself over at least one to two generations, and it's going to take a couple more. Once we come to terms with ourselves and say it is a problem, because there's a lot of denial out there. Any race could be a gang member now. I guess because they want to get their power base up, they have now recruited into any racial divide. I'm trying to be a part of the solution, not the problem. And if we had more parents to take out the time and stop thinking that it can't happen to them or their children, we might be able to save some of them. Get involved with your kids, especially if you live in an environment where, you know, there's a lot of gang activity, a lot of drug activities. Basically, they're going to get caught up in the game. So, you know, my suggestion to parents is, you know, watch your kids. If you have to walk them to school, walk them to school. If you have to, you know, pick them up at school, do that also because that's where these people breed at. Well, the family is number one, the family is number two, the family is number 100, and after that, other things come. But we have to do a job of strengthening our families, and I think that's the only way we're going to solve this problem. For a person to really want to be in a gang, he has to either enjoy prison or he's anxious to die, one or the other. You know, because it's nothing, you, if I look back on my life, all the years that I was in the gang, you know, I look at it as it hasn't made my life any better at all. Nothing good came out of it. Before, they were there to protect the culture. They were there to protect the Catholics. They were there to protect the Chinese, the Irish, the Italians. They were protecting each other's communities. Today, it's about business. It's about thugism. It's about dealing and making money. And that's the major change. And that we cannot blame on history. That we cannot blame on the government. That we cannot blame on law enforcement. That we cannot blame on our schools. That is a parenting problem. Praise children and reward good behavior. Involve children in extracurricular activities in school and the community. 
Know your children's friends and parents. Monitor your child's whereabouts and activities. Provide a positive role model. Be aware of signs associated with gang recruitment or membership. Intervene quickly when gang activity is suspected. Seek help and advice from family, church, school administrators, and the police. Do not allow children to wear gang clothing. Do not allow children to hang out in the streets with gang members. Be suspicious of graffiti and tattoos. Learn about drugs and gangs. Engage in honest communication with your child. Be a good listener. Talk with your children about decision making. Start early. This public service announcement was brought to you courtesy of the New Jersey Office of the Attorney General and the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice in cooperation with the New Jersey State Police, the New Jersey Department of Corrections, the New Jersey Juvenile Justice Commission, the New Jersey Department of Education, the New Jersey Prosecutors Association, and the East Coast Gang Investigators Association. For additional information, please visit www.njgangfree.org or call 1-877-SGU-NJSP.